Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Uh, pardon the uh, tardiness, uh, bad weather, and uh, uh, I guess we have uh, four of the members of the committee are from the County of Queens, and the County of Queens is doing their uh, business this morning, so we are now here, and we'd, uh, we're going to get this thing moving. So I'm Councilmember Adonique Miller. I'm Chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. Today we are voting on a package of legislation dubbed the Fair Work Week bills and on two resolutions which I sponsored uh, regarding the status of labor movement in light of uh, current Washington situation. <laughs> Nicely put, right? Okay. Uh, uh, we, we've done some hearings on that so we know that they have some uh, impact, whether it's through the budget, the Department of Labor, and uh, its impact on the and, and so those are the resolutions that we'll talk about. The first bill in the Fair Week, Work Week package is, is proposed intro 1384, a local law to amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to providing fast food employees the ability to make a voluntary contribution to non, for nonprofit organizations of their choice through a payroll deduction, sponsored by Council Member Ferreras Copeland. This bill would, bill would create a mechanism for fast food workers to make small contributions from their salaries to a not-for-profit of their choice via payroll deduction and would require employees to deduct and remit such donations to the Office of Labor Policy and Standards and sign up workers in fast food restaurants to make such donations a threshold of at least 500 employees, not necessarily the same employer, would be necessary before contributions to particular not-for-profits could be collected. The bill would explicitly exclude labor organizations from being able to register for such deductions consistent with federal labor laws. Before we get on to intro 1387, let me just say that um, 1384 um, is a bill who certainly uh, seeks to lend a, and provide a voice for those who are currently not organized within the labor movement, and particularly the, all the work that has been done um, uh, for those in the fast food industry. Um, but it was not without concern th for, for uh, throughout the entire labor movement. We want to keep this movement strong, and I think that uh, there's been over the past week and this past weekend uh, great concern, and I want to thank all those from the legislative department. Um, I want to thank all those in the speaker's office and, and the administration for working on it. I'd like to thank, uh, I see Mr. McGinnis out there for his expertise on this as well. And with all of those great minds coming together, I think that we have satisfied the concerns of the labor movement, understanding uh, the potential uh, unintended consequences and the protections that have been put in place and that therefore we are ready to move forward with this legislation and to um, be able to expedite this legislation. So with that being said, the second bill in the package proposed uh, intro 1387, a local law to amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to prohibiting on-call scheduling for retail employees sponsored by Councilmember Johnson. This bill would ban the practice of on-call scheduling for certain retail employees. On-call scheduling is when employees are required or requires an employee to be available to work to contact the employer or to wait to be con contacted by the employer to determine whether the employer must report to work. This bill will prohibit retail employers from c canceling scheduled work shifts within 72 hours of the start of the shift, requiring a retail employer to work with less than 72 hours notice unless the employer consents in writing, employee consents in writing, or requiring a retail employee to contact a retail employer to determine whether the retail employer should work a shift when there is fewer than 72 hours notice before the start of the shift. This bill will allow a retail employee to request time off or trade shifts with another retail employee through the bill, though the bill will not require the employer to grant such requests. The retail employer could make changes to retail employees' work schedule with less than 72 hours notice if the employer's 
operation were unable to begin or continue due to due to various emergency situations. The bill also would require a retail employer to post the work schedule 72 hours in advance and provide copies of the work schedule upon request by the employees. The bill would exempt workers subject to collective <laughs> bargaining agreement. A third bill is proposed intro 1388, a local law to amend the administrative code of New York in relation to banning consecutive work shifts in fast food restaurants involve, involving both closing and openings of restaurants, sponsored by Council Member Johnson. This bill would ban cloping for fast food employees. Fast food employers would not be able to uh, require fast food workers to work back-to-back -back shifts when one shift is closing of the establishment and the next shift is by the same employee is opening of the establishment on the next day or same times in the same day. The first shift when past midnight with fewer than 11 hours in between. An employer would have to pay an employee who volunteers work cloping shift $100 for each instance that such employee works such shifts. The next bill in the package is proposed intro 1395, a local law to amend the administrative code state of New York in relation to requiring fast food employees to work, work to offer work shifts to current employees before hiring additional employees, sponsored by Council Member Landa. This bill would require fast food employers with available work hours to offer shifts to existing employees before hiring new employees. This bill is intended to provide part-time fast food workers with a past path toward gaining additional hours and eventual full-time employment should they want this. Employers would only be required to offer, employers would only be required to offer additional hours, eventually, uh, would only be, should this uh, would only be required to, excuse me, offer hours to current employees up until the point at which employees would be required to pay overtime and or until the employees have rejected available hours, whichever comes first. Only after the employees have exhausted these options to provide such uh, shifts to current workers would they then be allowed to hire additional workers. The last bill in the package is proposed intro 1396, local law amend, uh, amend the, to amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to establishing general provisions governing fair work practices and requiring certain fast food employees to employ, employers to provide advance notice of schedule to employees and provide a schedule change premium when hours are changed after required notice sponsored by council member uh, Lander. This bill has two main parts, a general provision, sub chapter, sub chapter one and, and sub chapter that applies to scheduling shifts for fast food workers, sub, cha sub chapter two, the general provision applied to all the bills in the fair work week package, work week package except intro 1384 because that bill would create a separate chapter. These general provisions contain de definition generally applicable to applicable to for requiring requirements of the provisions contain definitions, uh, recording, record keeping, uh, prohibiting against retaliation enforcement authority for the Office of Labor Standards and administrative penalties and remedies. Employees may bring a private civil, employees may bring a private civil action for certain violations. Unlike the provision in subchapter one, which applies more broadly, the advanced scheduling requires in subchapter two of this scheduling bill are limited to fast food employees and their employers. Fast food employees must provide employees with an estimate of their work schedule upon hire, provide a work schedule 14 days in advance, including regular and on-call shifts, 
post the work schedule in a conspicuous place accessible to all employees and pay employees a premium for certain changes to work schedules that occur within 14-day notice. <laughs> changes that would tr trigger premium pay include canceling, shortening, or moving sh uh, shifts, adding hours to schedule work, and adding shifts. Premium amounts would increase as the start of the work shift nears. A fast food employer would not need to provide premium amounts if employers operation cannot begin or continue due to threat to employees or employees' property. The failure of public utilities or shutdown of tra public transportation, a fire flood or other natural disasters, a state emergency or severe weather conditions that pose a threat to employees' safety. Although, where an employer adds shifts to an employee's schedule to replace another employee who cannot safely travel to work, the employer must provide replacing employee with uh, applicable premium pay. A food, a fast food employer also would not need to provide premiums when the employer requires a schedule change in writing two employees' trade shift or an employer is required to pay overtime sh for the shift. This bill also would renumber existing provisions requiring and regarding shipboard gambling to accommodate these and future additions to Title 20 of the Administrative Code. In addition, we are voting on two resolutions today that we heard in the hearing last month, which is the topic of the labor movement in New York City uh, and uh, pr in, in the aftermath of 45 resolutions, 45's resolutions. The first resolution affirms New York City's right to collective bargaining, and the second is against federal legislation, pending federal legislation to national right to work, uh, to make that permanent and across the states. I'd like to thank the Legislative uh, Council, Matt Carlin, of course, uh, uh, Zola, and uh, Kendall Stevenson, and Ann Dickerson, Alexa Watsonberg, Wesley Jones, Michelle Lee from the legislative staff, and I see you over there, Taser. Thank you so much. Um, and again, to those folks that we mentioned. And so now, uh, okay, and uh, so, um, I'd like to introduce the, the uh, members of the committee. To my left, we have Council Member Liz Crowley, Council Member Danny Drum, Council Member Robert Carnegie, and Council Member Costa Costa Tanidis. Uh, before we begin and take a vote, I'd like to uh, give Council Member Lander the sponsor of this legislation opportunity to say for a few words. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a very exciting day. Uh, I think we all know that across the country, the challenge of good jobs, the challenge of income inequality, the challenge of shift and contingent work that makes it possible for people to put together enough income to lead a decent life, especially in this expensive city, but all across the country uh, is very real. Um, and that even though, of course, that was a feature uh, discussed in the election, uh, at the federal level, we are going backwards on those issues. We're not going to have a labor department that looks out for workers. And so um, after we – it's exciting to be in a city that is moving forward to give workers uh, a fair shake and a, a decent shot at a stable schedule um, and enough income to make ends meet and to organize together with their fellow workers. Um, at the hearing, we heard from just uh, fast food and retail workers especially – talking about the challenges presented by um, shifting shifts, by not getting enough advance notice of what their schedule is, by being forced to work clopenings, by not being able to get full-time work or more hours even if they want them, and about their efforts, especially led by um, uh, the Fight for 15 and Fast Food Forward and 32BJ to come together to make that happen. Um, and I'm thrilled that we're at this point where we're able to adopt this legislation my legislation 1395A and 1396A, as you mentioned, focuses specifically on the schedules for fast food workers, and we'll make sure that they have two weeks advance notice of their schedule so they can put the rest of their lives together 
Um, and if their schedules are shifted, especially if shifts are taken away um, after that, um, they'll receive schedule pay premiums. To, um, and then 1395A makes sure that for workers who want to get more hours, they'll have that opportunity to do so up to becoming full-time employees because before an employer posts for a new hire, if somebody leaves and instead of posting for a new hire, they've got to offer those shifts to existing workers who have the chance to take them to get more hours to become full-time employees. Um, I'm highly enthusiastic about the rest of the package as well. Um, and I appreciate the work that, that you did um, so that everyone could feel comfortable with this new form of worker organizing. I think it is going to prove to be an exciting model. I you know, was out on the picket lines you know, just the other day. You know, we'll be out there with uh, workers under their traditional rights to organize under the National Labor Relations Act, and I'm glad these resolutions go at the same time to make clear how strongly we stand for those. But we know that new forms of organizing are needed as well to help workers in uh, other kinds of industries that have a harder time forming a labor union to have the chance to have their voice heard too. So this is a great package. It, a lot of work has gone into it. I'm not going to name all the staff and all the hours they put in, but many, many, many hours. And I just really want to thank the staff, uh, thank all our partners, uh, thank the chair and the other council members. This, uh, this and when we pass this on the floor, um, really are a, a, a great day uh, for fast food and retail workers especially, but I think for the idea of a more fair and equal economy in this city and as a beacon for what that can, should, and someday will look like across the rest of the country as well. Thank you. Oh, and also I'm excited that uh, I never have been involved in legislation before that touched on shipboard gambling. <laughs> uh, I will flag for the public. We're just moving the sections that are connected to shipboard gambling to create more room in this chapter so we can do other things in it. We are not making any changes to the rules and regulations covering shipboard gambling in New York City. Thank you. Th thank you for that clarity, uh, Council Member Lander. And, and before we vote, I do want to take the privilege to, to um, affirm uh, the resolutions, our, our commitment to these resolutions, which is a commitment to uh, the right to collective bargaining, and one would think that in these times, and in particularly in New York State, a state of, of, of such union density and activity, um, that it would not be necessary. But if we just look to our left and right and look at uh, the 28 states that throughout the country had, that have adopted right to state, right to work laws and its impact on its workers, um, certainly we want to take a proactive stay ahead of the curve position. And so we are affirming the right to collective bargaining here in New York City and um, the right to organize. And, and, and those things, um, if we have those very basic concepts uh, around organizing and organized labor here in New York City, um, we can do all the things that we say that we we can continue to value workers and ensure that they have the quality of life and the opportunity for the quality of life that they deserve. So that is my piece on the um, uh, the two resolutions. And with that, I would ask uh, that we call the roll to the vote. Committee Clerk Matthew DeStefano, Committee on Civil Service and Labor. Roll call on intro numbers 1384A, 1387A, 1388A, 1395A, 1396A, and resolutions 1444 and 1445. Chair Miller. Crowley, I vote aye on all. Crowley. I vote aye. Drum. Aye on all. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. So uh, on 1384A, um, I had a uh, secret, very, ex very important um, goal that seemed to be achieved by the bill. Um, in my community, uh, oftentimes the, the lowest paid workers don't have the opportunity to vote for their interests or to put in on their interests, such as the United Negro College Fund, the Urban League, the NAACP. Um, and, I, and I felt like this was an opportunity or could provide an opportunity for people to actually put in on their specific interests. Um, I am going to abstain on that today until I can get specifics on whether or not it reaches my goal uh, and whether or not that goal can be reached without legislation. So on 1384A, I abstain and I on everything else. 
By a vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, the items have been adopted with the exception of intro 1384A, where the vote was four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. Thanks, everyone, for coming out with that. We call this hearing is now adjourned.